welcome to our Eucharist on this Palm Sunday morning. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hosanna to the Son of David, the King of Israel. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God showed his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us confess our sins. O oh God, you know my foolishness and my sins are not hidden from you. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Let not the flood overwhelm me, nor the depths swallow me up. Let not the pit shut its mouth upon me. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Hear me, O Lord, as your loving kindness is good. Turn to me as your compassion is great. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. True and humble King, hailed by the crowd as Messiah, grant us the faith to know you and love you, that we may be found beside you on the way to or the way of the cross, which is the path of glory. Amen. A reading from Philippians. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself, and became obedient to death, even, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him on the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Hear the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Be to God. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel according to Matthew. Glory, glory to, to Christ, Christ our Saviour. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethphage on the mountain of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go to the village ahead of you, and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, tell him that the Lord needs them, and he will send them right away. This took place to fulfill what was written through the prophet. Say to the daughter of Zion, See, your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt, placed their cloaks on them, and Jesus sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. 
Jesus entered the temple area and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. It is written, he said to them, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of robbers. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple and he healed them. But when the chief priests and teachers of the law saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children shouting in the temple area, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Did you hear what these children are saying? they asked him. Yes, replied Jesus. Have you never read from the lips of children and infants you have ordained praise? This is the gospel of Christ. Praise, praise to Christ, Christ our Lord. Lord. Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, come to us. Make yourself known to us. May we see you, Jesus, with the same clarity of vision and openness of heart that was true of those who were with you that day riding and walking into Jerusalem. Come to us, we pray, in your name. Amen. Amen. As we encounter Jesus entering the city of Jerusalem, he knows and we know that he will not leave Jerusalem before his life is taken. And I imagine that there was really a sense when he crossed through those gates, went through those gates and through that wall into the city. I imagine Jesus must have heard this clang of the gate shutting behind him metaphorically. And knowing that this was it, within a week, he would be tortured, crucified, and dead. We also know that for several weeks now, maybe even a couple of months, he'd been traveling deliberately to Jerusalem to die and warning his disciples repeatedly of what lay before him. And it's been very clear that there was fear, sadness, misgiving in Jesus as he was approaching. You can read and hear his sadness as he says to his disciples, the Son of Man is going to be tortured and beaten and flogged and finally crucified. Yet curiously, and here's the strange thing, as we approach this passage today and these events on Palm Sunday, I would have expected the very uh, gloomy Jesus, or at best maybe a Jesus with his jaw clenched and trying hard to be strong. But I want to put to you that in this ride into a walk and then ride into Jerusalem and in the activities that he does here, I want to suggest that there is an amazingly free Jesus, an amazingly joyful Jesus, and an amazingly direct and honest Jesus. Not to say that he wasn't these things before, but I would suggest even more so. And we might want to ask, what might have done this for him? Well, if we turn back somewhat to events prior to this, we see Jesus announcing his death to his disciples, and he's taken onto the Mount of Transfiguration. And there he gleams with light, with heavenly light, and Moses and Elijah come, they gleam too, and the Father speaks, and Jesus sees where all of this is going, which is his glory and resurrection and final salvation of this world. And I want to suggest to you that Jesus, in some way, 
during that journey, that slow journey from the north of Israel all the way down to the south and through Samaria with many encounters and much teaching, I want to suggest that Jesus was processing his death, thinking about his death. And I don't think the fear or the pain left him, but I think space was made for more. And I want to just add here that during this time of uh, lockdown and being so isolated from one another, I've had the privilege of some wonderful conversations, not physically face to face, but electronically. And one of the things that has touched me very deeply is that in various ways, some of those speaking with me, let it be known that they've been grappling with the reality of what is my life about? If I live through this, how might I be different? If I don't live through it, what has my life, what does my life mean? And there's been some beautiful stuff going on. And to be honest, as I've gazed at their faces, I've seen qualities that touch me very deeply. I think maybe Jesus was going through something like that. But very briefly, I just want to mention something of what we see of him here. Before he enters into Jerusalem, he's traveling through foreign territories, so to speak, and in Jericho. And there two people are begging at the side of the road. And Jesus, even as he's heading to Jerusalem with his purposes firmly fixed in his mind, it tells us that he had compassion on them, touched their eyes, and gave them their sight. And I see Jesus being profoundly present to even one or two people at the side of the road in need. This amazing presence even in his time of sadness and waiting. And then as they approach Jerusalem and gaze down from the Mount of Olives onto Jerusalem, Jesus sends his disciples for the donkey for him to ride in. I don't think we need to say much about that, but even here there's a sense of sort of um, prescience of knowing what's coming, prophecy if you like, and not only his death, but this donkey was waiting and ready to get on it. Oftentimes, when people face death, they know things that they normally don't know. If they're on their deathbed, they may see family members in the corners of the room. They may see angels. And I don't think these are imagination. I think as we think about death, but as we prepare ourselves, there is some clarifying of our vision. And I suggest this may have been part of what was going on here. But then along with that, you've had, you have Jesus sitting on this donkey, side saddle, with the crowds around him, cloaks on the donkey, cloaks on the road, branches on the road, riding peacefully, calmly, benignly, joyfully, I suspect, into Jerusalem. Of course, people would have been shouting Hosanna, some of them, because they've had encounters with Jesus, they were Galileans, they traveled with him to the Passover. But I want to suggest to you that as Jesus sat on this donkey, declaring in effect that he was Messiah, but so humbly, and it describes, it, it describes him as being gentle, I want to suggest that there was a beauty, a radiance, a loveliness, a peacefulness, a goodness about him that was part of the reason that these people praised him as they did. I can think of a few occasions in my life where I have attended a church that wasn't known to me and someone was there. Might have, in one case it was the organist, but as I looked at this man, I thought this is a profoundly good man, profoundly holy man. Sometimes we have the privilege of seeing that in someone. And I think that's what was shining forth from Jesus here. But the unexpected thing, the amazing thing is that Jesus switches from this gentle Jesus, this calm, gentle Jesus riding on the donkey. And when he sees this temple, this precious temple, where so much good has been done, so much worship of God has been done, the heart of Judaism, 
he sees what it's become. He sees commercialism, he sees professionalism, he sees stress, he sees worshippers possibly being fleeced and treated badly as they have to buy animals for, 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 for worship. And he's angry and chases the sellers out of the courtyard. I think this is also part of this distilling within Jesus, this coming together of who he is, what he's called for. And out of this consciousness of his approaching death, he is free to express this anger, not as an ugly, uh, resentful anger, but as a true cleaning anger, healing and making space for goodness. I remember being touched by someone who said to me once, as she was conscious of her approaching death, I remember her saying to me very clearly and humbly and, and quietly, she said, Vic, she said, I find that as I wrestle with my death, as I see my death approaching from the distance, I feel more compassion on humankind. I also feel less fear. And I find myself being free to speak at times very directly. We know that these qualities were true of Jesus anyway, but I'd like to suggest that as he approaches his death, all of this is crystallized, clarified. And he sees what matters most deeply to him. The worship of God, loving humankind, helping people, and bringing the truth of God to people. And ultimately his death on our behalf. I want to note just one other thing, though. You must remember that this temple precinct, and there was apparently about a mile of the, 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 the wall around the, the temple, was about a, a mile long. It was a huge complex. And the court of the Gentiles was, was on the very edge of this, where Jesus would have been now. But I want to suggest to you that with all these thronging tourists and worshippers, because Jerusalem apparently went from about 30,000 people, its normal population, to 180,000, they reckon, during Passover. So there would have been the pressing crowds, there would have been the jostling, the looking for accommodation, and then all this religious, um, well, I nearly said chicanery, but that's not the right word. But nonetheless, there was a lot of, of outward action and missing in many cases in this institutional religion was a simple heartfelt faith. Jesus comes and clears the courts and interestingly the blind and the lame come to him for healing. It's as if space has been made for encounter with God. So there and then Jesus turns and heals the blind and the lame. The children come, somehow they are drawn to all this, and they begin to praise Jesus. And somehow this jostling, rather hurried and, I think in many ways, stressed and business-like con uh, context, somehow in this space is made for God to be seen, God to heal, God to be praised. I would want to put to you that all of us on some level probably long for that kind of experience in our lives. Clarifying who we are. Clarifying what matters. And learning to speak in ways that are in touch with God and how he wants to live and work through us. Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, as we think of the need of our world, people closed in their homes in so many places, 
others dying, others facing the profound loss of loved ones and colleagues, and all those who seek to make sense of this and to help governments, medical people, police. And in our own country, Lord, our great need for wisdom for those who lead us, our president and others. Come to us. Give us wisdom. Give us grace. And we pray together the prayer um, which, was, which is a rendition of the Anima Christi. We pray, Jesus, may all that is you flow into me. May your body and blood be my food and drink. May your passion and death be my strength and life. Jesus, with you by my side, enough has been given. May the shelter I seek be the shadow of your cross. Let me not run from the love which you offer, but hold me safe from the forces of evil. On each of my dyings, shed your light and your love. Keep calling to me until that day comes when with all your saints, I may praise you forever. Amen. We invite you to partake of the Eucharist with us. And I remind you that there's a long tradition in the church that when believers are not able to have the bread and wine, nonetheless we believe Christ comes to us, feeds us with himself. He is to us the bread and the wine, heals us and renews us. So at the time when we partake, I invite you to be silent and to ask Jesus to come to you and heal you and bless you. Jesus, true vine and bread of life, ever giving yourself that the world might live, let us share your death and passion and help us to walk with you in the way of love. The Lord be with you. And, and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift, lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. Worship and praise belong to you, God our Maker. Out of nothing you called all worlds to be. And still you draw the universe to its fulfilment. Dawn and evening celebrate your glory, till time shall be no more. In Christ your Son the life of heaven and earth were joined, sealing the promise of a new creation, given yet still to come. Taught by your Spirit, we who, hear, who bear your threefold likeness look for the city of peace in whose light we are transfigured and the earth transformed. As children of your redeeming purpose, who await the coming of your Son, we offer you our praise, with angels and archangels and the whole company of heaven, singing the hymn of your unending glory. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God, God of power, power and might, God of might. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Glory and thanksgiving be to you, most loving Father. In Jesus you showed us yourself. Our hope is built on him, the first, the last, the living one. Obedient even to accepting death, he opened the gate of glory and calls us now to share the life of heaven. Before he was given up to suffering and death, alight with the vision of a feast that heralded a kingdom yet to come, at supper with his disciples he took bread and offered you thanks. He broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Our 
after supper he took the cup. He offered you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant. It is poured out for you and for all, that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. We now obey your son's command. We recall his blessed passion and death his glorious resurrection and ascension, and we look for the coming of his kingdom. Made one with him, we offer you these gifts, with them ourselves a single, holy, living sacrifice. Hear us, most merciful Father, and send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon this bread and this wine that overshadowed by his life-giving power, they may be the body and blood of your Son, and we may be kindled with the fire of your love and renewed for the service of your kingdom. Help us who are baptized into the fellowship of Christ's body to live and work to your praise and glory. May we grow together in unity and love, until at last in your new creation we enter into our heritage in the company of the Virgin Mary, the Apostles and Prophets, and all of our brothers and sisters, living and departed. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be to you, Lord of all ages, for ever and ever. As Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your, your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth, earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The living bread is broken for the life of the world. Lord, Lord unite, unite us in this sign. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, Bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, Redeemer of the world, give us your peace. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed.
let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you humbled yourself in taking on the form of a servant, and in obedience died on the cross for our salvation. Give us the mind to follow you, and to proclaim you as Lord and King, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. Amen. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Christ crucified draw you to himself, to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Our Eucharist is ended. Go in peace. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.